The following program contains sexual content. Viewer discretion advised. Today on an all new Dr. Phil. Did you put your daughter in a garbage bag, put weights in the garbage bag, and try to drown her in a bathtub? No, sir. An ex wife's shocking accusations. You say that he poisoned your daughter's ice cream, but you did not take her to the emergency room. I didn't. A bitter custody battle. My kids tell me I have a bruise, and my mommy said that you put it there. I am not coaching my daughters to lie. Our producer set three wake up calls for you this. This morning, and you blame your monster kids for being late. Oh, no, it wasn't their fault, no. I know it's not their fault. I'm curious that you don't know it's not their fault. Let's do it. Have a good show, everybody. Here we go. This is a safe place to talk about hard things. Stand by. We'll count you down. I'm trying to be an emotional compass and point you in the right direction. Five, four. I am not giving up on you. I'm here to tell you, when a guest writes me saying she's worried because two little girls are wandering the neighborhood alone and saying the parents are nowhere to be found, you better believe you are going to the front of the line. I pay attention. When I read further and I see there are allegations of poison in ice cream to a child put in a garbage bag with rocks and tossed in the bathtub, I have never heard a story with so many outrageous accusations. Take a look. The girls are constantly telling me their daddy is planning to kill us all. My oldest daughter's school has called me because she told them that their father was going to come and beat me with the baseball bat until I die. These stories are insane and they keep getting worse. She's convinced my children that I hide on their balcony and that you're gonna kill us all. Sandra lives on the third story balcony, so I have to climb up the building like Spider-Man. I'm not Spider-Man, I'm not climbing up her building. I believe that my ex-husband is sexually abusive to my daughters. Both of my daughters have come home telling me that daddy is touching them in their private areas inappropriately. I am not sexually abusing my daughters. My older daughter has leg pains, they're growing pains, and I will rub that pain out of her leg and Sandra will take that to the worst scenario possible. Sandra tells everyone that I'm a child molester. She tells people at the school, the grocery store. Sandra has threatened calling my job and telling them that I'm a child molester. My daughters come home saying that their food tastes funny and that they think daddy puts poison inside their food. Sandra has accused me of putting poison in my daughter's food, feeding them moldy food, putting dirt in their pizza. This is absolutely insane. My youngest daughter thinks daddy put something in her ice cream because it was originally pink and blue and after it was red and blue. It tasted funny. She was very tired, her tummy was hurting her. Sandra is crazy and it's just pathetic. My youngest daughter has gone as far as saying she wishes she was dead because of daddy. She wants to kill herself. I believe that if my youngest one knew how to, she would. It's only a matter of time. There's countless times where my daughter will come to me and she'll have a bruise and my daughter will tell me, mommy says you put that there. It scares me to death that she could be framing me. I do think she's a horrible mother. Is one parent making up these shocking stories and coaching their children to tell lies about the other? Sandra says there is no way her children could have made up a story like this one. My oldest daughter said her father had taken two blankets, threw them over her, and then put her inside a garbage bag. She said that her father put rocks on her, and she felt like he threw her in the pool. My little one said, I looked in the tub, and I heard noises, and I ran and got scissors. I cut the ropes in strings, and then there was rocks. One was on her sister's head, one on each hand, and one on her feet. Then Daddy came out of the room, and she got in trouble. When I think about that story, it scares the living out of me. There is no way any child can make up a story that detailed. I'm terrified that he's gonna successfully kill my daughters. Well, you can see children wandering the neighborhood was just the beginning and I am determined to get to the bottom of this mess because there are innocent children involved here whose lives could be in real danger. 
Joey says he hasn't had a normal conversation with his ex-wife, Sandra, in over a year. Can't promise today will be normal, but we are going to have a conversation. Sandra. Yes. Uh, you believe that you and your children's lives are in danger. I do. Tell me why. You believe that he's going to do what? He's going to kill us. My daughters come home on a regular basis saying how he plans to kill us all. And he's made death threats to me in the past. And has he told you how he's going to do it? Not to me directly, no. But every time they come home, it's a new story. It's something... Every week it's something new. And it's just heartbreaking because how can a child constantly be making up this stuff? How can a child know about these things? What has he told them he's going to do? Um... Well, once I had the school call me, because they've apparently called CPS twice, and one of the things is, my, she asked me, um, do you have somebody to check on you regularly? And I go, not really, what's up? And she goes, well, I'm concerned for your safety. And I'm like, why? And she's like, well, because your daughter's just told me how um, the, your ex-husband was gonna kill you, beat you with a baseball bat until you died. And you believe he's capable of doing that? Oh, I, I do. I mean, when, during the marriage, he was abusive. So, without a doubt, yeah, no. I already Did he ever try to kill you? Not try to kill me, but he was abusive as heck. Like, he would hit me, and there was one time, one of the, there's a lot of worse incidents, but when I was pregnant with my oldest daughter, um, I wouldn't have an abortion, and he was punching me in the stomach when I was six months pregnant. And you say the girls come home from his house with bruises and knuckle marks on their legs. They do. Uh -huh. So, Joey, what's the story here? Are, are, are you some kind of monster? Are you threatening to kill your whole family? Are you one of these people that we read about in the newspaper where some guy goes off the rails and winds up killing his whole family and then himself? Are you that guy? I'm not that guy. Sanders made countless crazy accusations against me, down to punching my daughters in the face, to forcing food in their mouth, to poisoning their food. It's, it's just ridiculous. My, my kids come to me and tell me, I have a bruise, and my mommy said that you put it there. There's, a, there's bruises on my daughter's knees that I found, and I asked my daughter, where did that come from? My mom said that you put it there. I'm not, I'm not a monster. Sandra and I have had our back and forth. There was abuse in the relationship, absolutely, between the two of us. I'm guilty of the abuse with Sandra. She's guilty of that with me, absolutely. You have but an I, anger problem? I, I'm, I have an anger problem to the point to where her saying all of this makes me angry. I'm not an angry person normally, but all of Sandra's accusations and her putting my name down constantly just it pisses me off beyond belief. She's talked to their school, she's talked to their teachers, the principal, parents at the school, and she's told me, I've told absolutely everyone I know that you're a child molester, everybody. And that sickens my stomach. I love my daughters more than life itself. And for her to say that I would sexually abuse them is beyond me. Have you touched your daughters inappropriately? No, sir. You said that he poisoned your daughter's ice cream. So I assume at that point you contacted the Poison Control Center, you took her immediately to the emergency room. I didn't. You did not seek treatment? I did not. And later, you blamed your monster kids for being late. Oh, no, it wasn't their fault. No, not at all. I know it's not their fault. I'm curious that you don't know it's not their fault. No, I know it's not their fault. Are you prepared to tell me the truth today? Yes, sir. Are you prepared to tell me the truth today? Yes, sir. Let me tell you something. I'm, um, I'm trained in forensic psychology. And I have worked as an officer of the court to determine fitness of a parent in the past. I don't do that anymore, but I, I'm, I, when I finished my training, I did my PhD, then I did my internship, I did all the things that you, that you do, 
that I went and did a year's postdoctoral fellowship in forensic psychology. And this is one of the things that we are trained to do. And when children are involved and children are in harm's way, I'm going to protect these children at all costs. Do you know what a mandated reporter is? Mm -hmm. Thank you. If you come in here trying to manipulate or lie, there is no measure I won't take to protect these children. You, you just need to understand that. You did not write me. You did not write me. A neighbor wrote me concerned about the two of you. Now, have you told us the truth? Yeah. Have, have you told us the truth? Yes, sir. Well, there are lots of accusations. I, I had to put them on a scroll. There were so many. Sandra, let's stop the scroll. Physically abusive during the marriage. Joey admits that. Wanted Sandra to place the second child for adoption. Is that the truth and the whole truth? That is the truth. Did you want to place the second child for adoption? I did not. Is that the truth? It's the truth to an extent. Yes, sir. No, there aren't versions of the truth. Did she want to place the child for adoption as well? Yes. That is the truth. Okay, look. We're, we're at a threshold here. I, I'm telling you, you do not want to lie to me. I cried. I was like, I'm seven months pregnant. I'm attached to my baby. I said, if I ever get pregnant with a third child, I do not want a third child. I would be happy to place a third child up because I already knew I, didn't, I don't want any more children. So you didn't say... Never once did I it, say... That we might should consider placing this child for adoption because we simply can't provide for it in the way we should. Yeah, exactly. You, you didn't he, say he, that. Yeah, he went as far as there's a family. That I didn't ask there. you about him. I asked you. you no, did not I never say once that. said it. No. Well, one of you is lying. Are you lying? No, sir. We talked to the family together. And I was too attached to the baby. I said, I'm sorry, but if I have a third child, I'd be happy to. Did you agree to talk to the family? I agreed to talk to the family because I thought it was heartbreaking that you would even, a family that can't have a child, why would you even give them false hope? You say that he threw daughters in the closet that he locked the seven-year-old in the closet with a cat and no food, that he's pushed and shoved the daughters, left bruises on the daughters, slapped the daughter in the face. Yes. H have, have you been aggressive with your daughters physically? I have not. Have you grabbed them? I have not. Did you poison your daughter's ice cream? No, sir. Okay, you, you, you said that he poisoned your daughter's ice cream. I have, I've gone to him asking him the questions because my daughters have come home and this is what I hear on a daily basis. This is something, all these things. Okay, so I assume at that point you'd contacted the Poison Control Center, you took her immediately to the emergency room. I didn't. Okay. She, she said, well, no, because she you said. You believe that your daughter was poisoned she, no. by your husband who you has said has made multiple she, threats to kill you all. She comes home and says, I think my ice cream is poisoned. You believe it enough to make an accusation on national television against your husband that he has poisoned your daughter, but you did not take her to the emergency room and you did not call the poison control center? I didn't. Here, yeah, sir. I, 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 talked, I only talked to her and then I asked her, whatever she said, I, was, I communicated with him and everything that she said, you know, daddy opened my ice cream and then she's like, you know, I, she lay down and then she goes, I feel fine. And I'm like, are you sure? Okay, I contact you. Sorry. You've made an accusation against your husband on national television that he poisoned your daughter's ice cream. You've told it to us numerous times. We have it on a tape piece. Ice cream changed color. That You said he poisoned your daughter's ice cream. You told your neighbor about him poisoning your daughter's ice cream. You told us about him poisoning your daughter's ice cream. I assume you've told anybody that has ears that he poisoned your daughter's ice cream. But you did not even pick up the phone and call the Poison Control Center. I did not. You did not seek treatment. I did not. So do you really believe that the man poisoned your daughter's ice cream? I, I don't know what to believe, honestly, sir. Well, you believed it enough to make well, the allegation on national no, television. No, I mean, I, I will state anything that my daughters have told me, yes. When she sent me the message about the ice cream, she said that my daughter couldn't move. I told Sandra that I would send an ambulance to the house. I would send the police if my daughter needed help. So your daughter had paralysis? No, I said she said she couldn't move, but she was moving. I was watching her the whole time. Did I offer to send an ambulance to your house? Um, I think you were cursing at me. Are you a responsible mother? I, I try the best that I can. Well, if you believe that your daughter had been poisoned, a responsible mother, a reasonable mother, 
in the same or similar circumstances would be expected to take action to protect their daughter's well-being. They have taken a blood test through their doctor before, prior, because they've said it, but it was the time was too long that has had passed. So it's like I have. Okay, you're being totally non-responsive. So I'm, to not, I'm, I'm not trying to be non-responsive. I think you are. I think you're trying to deflect from my point no, because no, no. I'm I, saying no, you either didn't believe it or I, you're not I a reasonable it, mother. And, and then I was like, okay, I'll take you to the doctor's uh, urgent care. What time was it? It was. No, 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 no. Sorry, sorry. Stay sorry. with me here. Okay. You're in the moment. Your daughter says. I've been poisoned. I was watching just, I was watching her behaviors. That's all I was doing. I was like. Okay. If you believed it, would a reasonable mother reach out for consultation and care? Yes. Are you a reasonable mother? I try to be my best that I can. And did you reach out for consultation and care? I can't remember. Okay. Quick focus group. If you believed that your child had been poisoned, would you reach out for consultation and care? Raise your hand. Okay. Just checking. So if you had believed she was poisoned, you would have acted in a reasonable fashion. Correct? Correct. You told them that your ex-husband attempted to murder your oldest daughter. Did you put your daughter in a garbage bag and try to drown her in a bathtub? No, sir. And later, Sandra and Joey both agreed to take polygraph exams regarding allegations of sexual abuse. And the result was... Across this great country, from coast to coast, you've told me about the crossroads we're facing. That's exactly why I wrote, We've Got Issues, How You Can Stand Strong for America's Soul and Sanity. This book isn't just a conversation starter. It's a roadmap for standing strong in the face of adversity, for embracing our core values when they're needed most. We're talking about real strategies for real people dealing with real issues, from navigating the complexities of today's polarized world to fortifying our families. And I set forth in the book 10 principles that I think are critical for a healthy society. This is not about politics. I'm not a politician, don't want to be a politician, don't know enough about politics to talk about it but I talk about every angle of life as we know it, from family and relationships to the burning issues that are shaping our world today. We've got issues. How you can stand strong for America's soul and sanity. And you'll find it anywhere books are sold. It's about time we start addressing what truly matters. Your daughter's told you that he wrapped her in a blanket, put her in a garbage bag, put weights in the garbage bag, then put her in the bathtub and turned on the water. Well, she said it felt like daddy threw me in the pool. And then my little one, because they weren't together, I, they, my oldest came to me talking to me and told me that story. And at this point, I didn't know what to believe. And then my little one came in and she backed the story up 110%. And then I went to my neighbor, I go, can you talk to my girls? And she spoke, the girls told her the same story. And I did call the police. And I'm like, because we had a detective on the case. And they're like, it's best to talk to that detective. And then he sent me over to, he told me to call CP, like, oh, well, that's CPS. So I went to CPS, nothing, like, nobody heard me. So you called detectives and told them that your ex-husband attempted to murder your oldest daughter. They didn't even let me get that far. And nobody... It, like, it was like, oh, like, kind of like on to the next one, on to the, like, and it's by the time I got to CPS, it's coached your kids, blah, 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 and it's just like... Okay, did you, um, did you wrap your daughter in a blanket, put her in a garbage bag, put weights in the garbage bag, and try to drown her in a bathtub? No, sir. Look me in the eye. No, sir. Did you do that? No. Did you do anything like that? Not even close. Did you do anything similar to that? No. Did you threaten to do that? No. Did you describe doing that? No. Was there any time in a game, fantasy, fiction, that you had your daughter in a garbage bag? No. No. Then where does this come from? It, it really comes because from... Because if you did that, they may not listen to her, but they will listen to me. I agree. And you will be prosecuted because you would deserve to be prosecuted if you did that. I agree. That is a crime. Yes, sir. And you're saying you did not do that. I did not do that. So where does that come from? 
It really comes from Sandra's delusions. I mean, that's not the worst that she's accused me of. And, what and else I, has she accused I, I you I heard of? that story, and I heard that it was rocks. I, I filled a trash bag full of rocks. I wrapped uh, my older daughter in some kind of a princess blanket, and then I put her inside of a trash bag, filled up a bathtub full of water, and placed my older daughter inside the water, inside the trash bag, and then I heard that my younger daughter came and had to tear her out free, and that I punished my younger daughter for taking her older daughter out of the trash bag. That's what I heard. And you're telling me you didn't do that? Not even Nothing close. like that? Nothing like that. How about not in a pool, not in a bathtub, not in a street, nowhere, no how, no way? No, sir. Well, you're exactly right. That, that's something that a child would have a hard time making up. So where would that come from? I don't know. Like, we don't, everything that we watch at home is, you know, Barbie movies, Disney. We don't have cable. And what killed me the most about that, my oldest, my youngest daughter, is like, I cut the ropes and strings. When she said that. And then she's like, and then when she... She cut the ropes and strings? Off of, because she heard a noise. And then she's like, I looked in the bathtub and there was a bag. And like, the way she said it was like all nonchalant. I was like... And at the end she goes, and then daddy got mad and he sent me to the room. But I had an apple and a banana in my room, or an apple and orange. And I was just like, like it didn't even phase her, like, this is wrong. What did she cut it with? She said scissors. And originally she said, dad, you know how daddy doesn't let me go potty? And I go, yes. And she goes, he doesn't know I have a key hidden. And I'm like, okay. And then she goes, so I got the key and I went potty. And I'm like, all right, so what else happened? And she goes, and then I heard a noise. And I go, what do you mean? And she goes, well, the water was running. And I go, well, what do you mean, baby? Tell me more. And she goes, well, I heard a noise. And so I looked in. And then what made me believe the story even more was just recently. Recently, my youngest goes, I wish I'd never been born. And my oldest daughter looked over and she goes, if you weren't born, who would have saved me? You saved my life. And there has been some time between the two incidences, because this was in July, end of July. And now we're in October. And so it was like, if it had been a fabricated story, it wouldn't, she wouldn't have gotten so angry now, and she probably would have forgotten about it. She I, got a key to the bathroom. She has a hidden key. My bathroom doesn't lock. Well, I don't know. I, I don't go to your house. I don't know anything about it, and I don't care to go to your house, or no. I just believe what my daughter okay. telling me. I'm, okay. I said neither of these two people actually wrote in. When we come back, the neighbor who did write in and says she just doesn't know who to believe. What she does believe is that these girls are not safe. We're going to talk to her next. On Oops! The Podcast, join me, comedian Julio Gallarotti, as I examine everyday life, the mistakes, the bad decisions, the goals, the jokes, the social engagements, and all things in between. I'm joined every week by producer and personal confidant, Ryan Lynch, various other comedians for witty, candid, and intoxicating conversation. Our listeners love Oops! for sophisticated banter, aka your mom could listen, and many feel like they're in the room with us chopping it up with old pals. You can find every episode of the show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or YouTube. Sandra was sitting next to me on the couch and the older girl told her mommy that her private parts were hurting her like bees were stinging her. I wrote to Dr. Phil because I feel like they're physically in danger. And later, have you said things in front of your daughter? Yes, sir. What have you said? I just want to kill your mother. God, I just want to kill your mom. Joey says his ex-wife, Sandra, is a psychotic liar. But Sandra says her ex-husband is abusive and controlling. Their neighbor, Linda, wrote to me because she doesn't know who to believe. What she does believe is that the two little girls are in serious danger. Sandra tells me the craziest stories about Joey with the girls. The stories are so bizarre that I just don't know who's telling the truth. I think they're both liars. The only time I've ever heard anything directly from the girl's mouth, Sandra was sitting next to me on the couch, and the older girl told her mommy that her private parts were hurting her like bees were stinging her. I was so disgusted. 
he threatened to cut the girls up and cut one of the girls up, make the other girl watch. The older daughter said, my daddy said he's going to kill you and he's going to kill your cats. I would not be surprised if Sandra did something and said he did it. Just for the attention, I feel like all the anger and the fighting is coming to it, some kind of a head. I wrote to Dr. Phil because I feel like they're physically in danger. Well, Linda, thank you for writing. I'm glad you did. You didn't have to do this. You could do as so many people do, mind your own business. You live in the same apartment complex, correct? Mm -hmm. So the girls come to your house a lot? Your apartment a lot? Mm -hmm. Spend time with you a lot? Yes. Uh huh. And the nine-year-old told you about the garbage bag in the bathtub? Yes, uh -huh. she did. And when she told you about it, was she upset? No. It was I think like it was, was, it was an, I think it might have been a while after she originally said it, maybe like a couple of weeks later that she was telling me. Uh -huh. Not on the, you know, in the moment. Yeah. But it was very, very matter of fact. Uh -huh. And you spend a lot of time together. Yes. The two of you. Do you go to their house or she comes to yours? She comes to my house. Okay. What does she talk about? <laughs> Joe and Joey and the girls, mostly. Uh -huh. um, but we talk about everything. But that is the biggest thing that she talks about, m mostly. Especially because there's been so much court stuff and... When we really first started talking to Matt about it the most was um, last year when, um, when Joey got 50% custody. And before that, he just had a couple nights a week. So when she came back from that hearing, she was just devastated. And I think since then, it's just been a series of police court stories. Okay, she says that she... I talked to her about, is she a reasonable mother? She says yes. She says that the girls hate to go with their father, that they scream, cry, don't want to go with him. They cry, they, they hate to go there, they hate to be with their father, that they want to stay with her, that they don't ever want to go with him, that they love being with her, and that she's a good mother. You're here because you're concerned about the girls. Mm -hmm. You're not here for a popularity contest with either one of these two. No. You've taken the high ground, and I know that's not easy for you. You it figure you're going to make at least one enemy, if not two, mm -hmm. during this whole thing, but right. you're a guardian angel for these girls, and I ad admire your courage. What do you observe with regard to her mothering? Is she doing what she's saying she's doing, or are these girls being neglected? As far as going to Joe's, um, I only see them, not all the time, when they go. But when they leave to go and when they come back, I, I don't ever see them upset or crying. They may be doing that at her house, but when they're at my house and there, it's time to go with Dad, they just go. They, they, don't, they don't fight, they don't cry. I'm talking to her. Um, and when they come back... Uh, they seem to be fine. I, I had some issues when my daughter was younger with her dad, and when she didn't want to go, she just f threw herself on the ground and screamed like a baby. And that is kind of what I expected to see, but I, I haven't seen that. I don't, I don't know what happens to her husband. But at my house, I've seen them go with their dad and return from their dads numerous times, and I've, I've not seen that reaction. Coming up, Linda says Sandra is sleeping for six hours a day leaving her to care for the girls. We'll talk about that next. The girls have called me from Sandra's phone. Their mom had been sleeping all day and they were hungry. They were too afraid to wake her up. I just want to smack her. You're so irresponsible. And later, you did not participate in the drug test. In my defense, I don't like water, I'm not a big water person. Did somebody write stupid on my forehead? As for Sandra, Linda says she has a lot of questionable mothering skills. Take a look. I think that Sandra doesn't know how to be a good mother. There's been numerous occasions 
where she just doesn't answer the door. And then I will go up there and bang on the door. I think, oh my God, what if she's dead? Finally, she comes out. Oh, I thought you were Joey coming in to kill me. The girls have called me from Sandra's phone. Their mom had been sleeping all day and they were hungry. And would I please call her because they were too afraid to wake her up. I've heard of at least six or seven guys that have slept in her house. And when the girls wake up, they're still there. You're worried about your ex-husband touching your children, but you're not worried about these men in your house with your children. Sandra leaves the girls alone for hours. And I'll be like, you know, the girls have been up there for like three and a half hours. Oh, they're okay, they're watching a movie. We don't have air conditioning in our buildings. This summer, it's over 100. And they were up there the whole summer, all day and all night. I just want to smack her. You're so irresponsible. What do you say about that? OK, one, I don't, um, obviously I'm a woman. And I'm I, sorry? I said, obviously I'm a woman. I've been with people. But my kids don't meet whoever I'm with. Let me just start off with that one. And I actually, I talked to her. I talked to her about it as well. And um, secondly, they're not up there three hours alone, no. And actually, um, what was it, like a week or two weeks ago, she did, my daughter did stay. I don't want to go with my dad. Uh, what did she say? She said a bad word in between. I don't want to go with my daddy. And I looked over at Linda, and I was like, and then she, they left. What Sorry. she's saying on the tape is that the girls come get her to wake you up because that, they're going to get blasted if they do. No, that's not. She's saying that there have been six or seven guys that you're bringing in the apartment with right your right. daughters that are still there when they wake that's up. Not true that you sleep instead of feed them, that they're stuck in that apartment 24-7, 100 degrees, there's no air conditioning in there, they don't go out anywhere, and that your excuse is that Joey's out there and he's gonna kill everybody if you go outside. So they've gotta stay holed up in the apartment all the time. No, you can't go outside because he's out there lurking and is gonna kill everybody. We get nervous when we do outside, it's just, um, that, that, well, I do get nervous. I'm very cautious when I go out and leave. Um, but that, no, that's not all true, no. Hasn't the school called the CPS, called CPS on you three different times? They have not. They've called once on me and twice on him. They have called, um, once when they were sick, one day they were both sick, and Linda asked, oh, are you going to go to the grocery store? I said, actually, I am. The girls are sick. I had to go, I forgot what I had to go grab. And then she's like, well, can you come grab my grocery list? I said, sure, no problem. Because we live right downstairs from each other. I was gone not even five minutes. Uh, haven't you had the girls tardy 17 times? Um, they, they've been tardy a lot, yes, they have. And you told CPS that it's because... Oh, no, that's not for CPS. The little monsters and the principal, that the little monsters won't get up and get ready for school. Um, no. I do call them my little monsters, but I don't say, I don't refer to them as that, no. Linda? Mm -hmm. Is that not exactly what happened? This is what she says. I, I have asked her, why are you guys late for school all the time? And Well, we actually had a conversation about this. And she said, because they don't get me up. And I said, what do you mean? And she goes, well, they're supposed to get up, get dressed, make their breakfast, and then they're supposed to wake me up. But they never wake me up in time. I don't this is when I said to her, no, you're supposed to get up. You're supposed to get your kids Why up. Why are they no. supposed to get you up? No, that's not, no, because I wake up. That's what um, you said. No, that's I said, what you told I told, her. No, I told her because, you know, they don't brush their hair. And then she did get on me for about brushing hair because I make them brush their hair first and then I brush their hair. And then. Um, you don't brush their hair. Actually, no. I do. Ever. No, I do. No, you don't. And you, 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 you said to, to Linda, I don't brush their hair because they don't want to. No, I brush their hair after they brush their hair. I Linda, know that there was uh, there, have you seen these children in the same clothes five days in a row? Mm -hmm. Has she left them alone for hours while she's in your apartment? Yeah. Yes. I'm sorry? I said not hours. It's hours. Okay, what? You know, you, you comment on this stuff while the tape's playing, you're politicking her from the sorry. side. Sorry. While I'm asking her factual things, you, you're making comments from the peanut gallery on the side, like, uh, no, it's not ours. Well, I can see. Well, I can see. Sorry. You, do you have an excuse? Do you own anything? No, I do. I do own up to my faults and my flaws. 
when the children come back from his house, are they clean? Yes. Is their hair washed and braided? Yes. Is their homework done? Yes. Are they in better physical hygiene and organization than they are when they're with her? Yes. How do you explain that? Well, as far as like wearing the same clothes for five days. No, no, that wasn't the question. The question I mean, was, I can't, I can't they come it. home from his house clean, mm -hmm. clean clothes, washed, bathed, hair washed, hair braided, mm -hmm. homework done, everything organized in a good state of mind. Mm -hmm. But yet you say he's trying to drown them in the bathtub after he sexually molests them. I'm only saying what my daughters tell me. Like, honestly, I have not fabricated any of the statements in which they have told me. I haven't. Do you and think that I'm physically actually capable of those things? I don't know what you're capable of, Joe. Sorry. I did, in fact, say, I just want to kill your mother. God, I just want to kill your mom. Interestingly enough, today, our producer set three wake-up calls for you this morning. Mm -hmm. 6 a.m., 6.15, and 6.30. Mm -hmm. The producer checked in with you at 6.30 and confirmed you were awake. Yeah. The producer receives a phone call at 7.50 from our driver that you are still not in the car and not answering your phone. You were supposed to be in the car at 7.15. At 7.50, you're not in the car mm -hmm. and you're not answering your phone. The producer calls your cell phone, the hotel, and the hotel room to find you and you finally return calls to confirm you're in the car at 7.55 and you blame the hotel and quote your monster kids for being late. I said my little, my little munchkins. I didn't say monster, I believe. No, you said monster, monster kids. Oh, uh... No, I don't say, I, I, honestly, I'm not excusing it. You came all the way here desperate for help. You're telling your children, this is our last chance. This is our chance to get out of this hellish life. Mm -hmm. This is our chance. And you can't get up on time. No, I, and you show up in the car an hour late blaming your, quote, monster kids. Oh, no, it wasn't their fault. No, not at all. I told them... No, I'm saying... I know it's not their fault. I'm curious that you don't know it's not their fault. No, I know it's not their fault. People get angry. People get frustrated. They, they say things they don't mean. We all say things we don't mean. I, I, I get that. We... Oh, we get frustrated. And I mean, how many times have we been cut off in traffic, oh my God, I could just kill that guy. H have you gotten upset and said things like that in front of your daughters? Yes, sir. What have you said? Um, Sandra got me to the point to where I was so mad with all of our court proceedings, everything that's been going on, to withholding my kids, <clears throat> things like that. And I did, in fact, say with my daughters in the car, I just want to kill your mother. God, I just want to kill your mom. I, I did, in fact, say that. You said it in anger. Yes. Um, what else did you say? That's, that's all I've said around the children, that I, that I wanted to kill their mother. Did you say you wanted to kill them? No, sir. Did you say they were, were going to cut them up in little pieces? <laughs> no, sir. That's the first time I'm hearing that today. Did you realize what you were saying when you said it? Yes, and I, and I recanted it immediately. I said, I shouldn't have said that. I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. I don't want to do that. And moved on. How did they react? They were, they were a little bit uneasy. I, I saw the, the sadness in their eyes. You know, my daddy just said that. They wanted to, that he wanted to kill my mom. I saw that they were upset. And I made sure that I spoke to them about it, that I didn't mean it. And they, in fact, went to Sandra and told her that I said that. Uh-huh. And um, she's, she's brought this up in court. I was honest with the judge. I did, in fact, say those things, but they were out of anger. Uh -huh. And uh, on a scale of one to 10, how inappropriate 
is it to say that in your opinion? Probably an 11. Yeah. You get that. I do. Coming up, Sandra says the girls told her that their dad has touched them inappropriately. I'd like to get to the bottom of that, obviously, when we come back. Want to know what's coming up on Dr. Phil? Visit our website and subscribe to our email newsletter. You'll get weekly updates, life strategies, and exclusive video that you won't find anywhere else. Plus, on drphil.com, you can see sneak previews of upcoming shows. Log on today. We ran out of time today trying to make sense of this bitter custody battle between Sandra and Joey. Joey and Sandra have both agreed to take a polygraph exam and a drug test. Is Sandra coaching her daughters to say all of this, or did Joey actually touch them inappropriately? Well, we're going to find out, and you don't want to miss tomorrow when I reveal the results. Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil. Sandra is coaching my children to make me look like a bad father. And no, I haven't been coaching my daughters. They both agree to take a polygraph. She said if he passes, meaning that you did not molest your girls, I would be heartbroken. No, I'd be heartbroken if he That's fixed. exactly what you said. But you won't believe this mother's excuse when asked to take a drug test. You refuse to give a sample. No, I don't refuse to give a sample. I haven't had to use restroom. I don't like water. I'm not a big water person. Did somebody write stupid on my forehead? Who is telling the truth? The result came back that you were... That's tomorrow. I want to thank all of my guests today. On, on DrPhil.com, we'll have some important tips for parents going through divorce. Thanks so much. We'll see you tomorrow.